Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Tension, stress, anxiety, restlessness, fatigue, worn out, overworked, tired. Do any of these words resonate with you? Perhaps they describe your life right now. A life of busyness and hurry from one thing to the next without any breath in between. And when you do have a moment to stop, you wonder, do I really need to be doing all this stuff? What's the purpose of all of these things that I keep rushing off to? And what am I going to look like in 15 years of living like this? Maybe this describes the pace of your current life. Maybe it describes the drive to succeed that's been instilled in you as you've grown up in the United States of America, to work and work and work until you just can't work anymore. Or perhaps the real source of these feelings is a never-ending struggle to find an answer for what is the real healthy biblical balance of a godly life. And am I really spending all my time doing things that are related to the meaning of life that I seem to believe in when I come to church? Studies show that right now in the United States, anxiety, depression, and pretty much every other form of mental health burden are higher than they've ever been. Something is wrong with the way we are living our lives on a cultural level. We seem to be depriving our created being from things that it needs with the way we choose to spend our time. And on top of all that, we don't do that well anyways. We sin. We get angry with those that we love. We don't do the things that we ought and even the things that we know we ought to do, we either don't do or we do them poorly. Or we put them off. And so now on top of being tired and anxious and stressed, you also feel guilty and frustrated that you can't live up even to the own expectations you've set for yourself. Well, if this describes you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, overworked, stressed, anxious, and the last thing on your mind is a sense of peace and relief, Jesus has a wondrous message for you today. Jesus says to you to lay those burdens down. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Jesus says to you today. Have you ever been heavy laden? And I mean that literally, not figuratively. Carrying a heavy load, maybe helping a friend move into a new house or apartment and you're carrying furniture. When I think of this, when I read this passage, it makes me think of my time at Philmont. So yeah, Philmont is, a, is a, a high-intensity backpacking camp, and you have to carry everything that your group needs on your person. So you buy these big hiking backpacks, and they can weigh up to like 120 pounds when they're jammed full of your clothes and your tent and your water and your food and everything you need to survive out in the wilderness. And then once you put that big 100-pound pack on, then you're going to walk 12 miles, carrying all that with you. Not an easy task. In fact, they have pretty strict requirements for physical fitness because people try to do it that can't, and it causes them bodily harm. It's a tough walk, a weight bearing down on you as you walk from place to place, sometimes downhill, but often up steep mountain slopes. It was a fun trip, but I can't imagine taking that burden which I bore for 12 days and walking around every day with it. Can you imagine that? Just now, starting tomorrow for the rest of your life, you're going to carry a backpack around with 100 pounds in it. 
Well, Jesus, of course, is talking about a different sort of burden, not a literal burden of weight, but that image and that that imagined scenario can help us understand the need for Jesus in all of our lives. Because the, the figurative burden that Jesus is speaking of can often be worse than the literal burden of carrying around 100 pounds. Many of you know this in your own lives. Maybe it's happening to you right now. Maybe it's something in your past. Maybe it's something in your future where this world just piles on so much and you just don't know how you're going to be able to stand it. Whether it's sin that has been done against you or sin you've done yourself. Now, we learn from the reading in, in Romans from Paul that this burden is the result of sin in violation of God's law, that it heaps upon us guilt and a deserved guilt that we cannot shed because we're in the same boat as Paul. The good that we desperately want to do, we never find ourselves doing. And instead, we find ourselves doing the things we do not wish to do enslaved to the old sinful flesh. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says. Well, just a quick aside for that term, yoke, some people may not know what that meant. A yoke was a wooden cross piece that was fastened over the necks of two animals, usually an oxen that were used to till a field. So Jesus is using this as a symbol of the weight and the burden of hard work to to, to point to the yoke that we bear under the law. It weighs us down. It fastens us to tasks which ultimately we feel are futile because we can't do them. I recall last year during a Bible study we were talking about the sixth commandment and one of our members here was wondering after I explained the depth to which the law cuts It's even about the thoughts you have in your head, and they say, well, who could even do that? Same question Paul asks himself here, and the answer is, we can't. Despite our best intentions and efforts, our yoke, our burden, is too much for us to bear. Enter Jesus. Jesus doesn't come with some self-help mantra about how you can throw off your own yoke. He doesn't give you ten steps to better your life. He comes and takes the yoke upon Himself. He comes and says, Come to Me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, Jesus says. Because He's going to take our yoke that is crushing us under the law upon Himself. And He's going to take that yoke to the cross and destroy it forever. So you and I, we used to, as Paul says in the letter to Romans, we used to be people who lived under the law, imprisoned in a body of death that despite our best intentions, we couldn't control. And you know what I'm talking about, we all do. I want to do this, and you end up doing something else. Or I want to stop doing this, and yet Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you come here, and in your private confession in your heart to God, you're saying the same stuff over and over and over again. That's what Paul is talking about. That's the burden that we bear that crushes us. You're not alone. We're all in the same boat. And so, Jesus comes, and He comes not to help us bear our burden, but to take it off of us completely, because He knows the same thing that Paul is expressing. You can't do it. I can't do it. But He loves us and wants us to be saved, and so He does what we cannot and bears the burden of our sins and the sins of the world and takes it to the cross and pays the price that we cannot. 
And the joyous message of today is that in exchange, inexplicably and unbelievably, He takes our yoke, which is just worn down with the burdens of so much sin, and in exchange gives us His burden, which is nothing. A burden, if you can even call it that, of being the perfect Son of God, perfectly righteous and living under His grace. You see, when Jesus comes along, it isn't that the law disappears, and He Himself teaches this. I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. But He does free us from its condemnation. You can almost hear the agony in Paul's voice through the writing in that section in Romans. Who is going to rescue me from this body of death? I always sort of pictured him down on his knees, sort of shouting that at the sky because he's tried every single thing he can think of and nothing works. All of his best efforts keep bringing him further and further down in the burden and mire of his own sin. And in his desperation, he calls out to God for rescue. Enter Jesus. Come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He rescues Paul from the burden of his sin by calling him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Paul didn't come to a new understanding about the law. It just, he encountered Jesus, and Jesus told him what he had done, and now everything is different. Now, Paul, who formerly murdered Christians, is now a preacher for the very Christ whom he scorned and reaching many, many people with the Word of God, free from the burden of the guilt of his sin. Jesus has come to do the same for you. So whatever burdens you're bearing right now, guilt over a sin committed this week, or guilt over a sin committed long ago that you have had trouble letting go, Jesus is coming to you today to take that burden away, not because you deserve it, not through any work of your own. He's not going to coach you into tossing it off yourself. He's simply going to take it upon Himself, and He wants to do it because He loves you. He wants to do it because He wants you to live forever in His kingdom. And the only way that happens is for this switching of burdens. He wants you to give up on your own efforts, your own efforts to fix your life, to change what you're doing, and turn to Him. Stop looking to obedience to the law or some set of rules as a means of relieving yourself or setting yourself free. Rather, look to Christ's obedience to the law, that He has done perfectly what we cannot, and freely of grace and love is giving us that burden, the burden of His perfect righteousness and His holy restored relationship to God. So that as I shared with the children, now when God looks at you, all the things that come to your mind when I say the burden of guilt and sin, He sees them no more. Those were crucified on the cross of Jesus Christ. And now when He looks at you, He sees a perfect child of God, bought with the precious blood of Jesus, bearing His yoke, which is light no longer crushed by the law. So, dear friends in Christ today, our Lord Jesus is offering you His yoke, a yoke that is unburdened by the guilt of sin, no longer under the condemnation of the law, but under grace, so that you may not be crushed, but rather you come here in week in and week out, confessing your sins knowing and believing by faith they are forgiven in Jesus every single time. Because it isn't about, this Christian life isn't about you becoming a better person. 
It's about you relying more and more on the perfect person who has given you His righteousness, our Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing I'll note from our text is in verse 29. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And then this last phrase, I love this last phrase. He doesn't say, you might find rest for your souls if you're good enough. It may happen to you. He says, you will find rest for your souls. See, the religious leaders of Jesus' time, they were putting the yoke of the law upon all their adherents. Jesus tells them that they're putting a burden upon their people which they themselves cannot bear. That's why I, as a pastor, can't stand up here and berate you for not following the law, because I don't either. The very same yoke which would crush you would also crush me. But instead, I preach to you Christ crucified and risen, for He is my hope and yours. For in those actions, He has taken the condemnation and burden of the law and given us the grace of His gospel. Jesus is God's righteousness manifest apart from God's law, given freely to you as a gift of grace. So in Him, you and I will and do find rest for our souls. That's why at the beginning of every service here at Ascension, I tell you to take a deep breath and relax because you're not here to do things. You're not here to be a good person. You're here to receive Jesus, to be rescued by Him through His Word and His sacraments, to be relieved of the burden of the yoke of the law and given His. And it's a joyous thing, because as Jesus says today in our gospel reading, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So who is going to rescue you from your body of death? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen.